Say you hopped in your car and started driving at 50 miles per hour for three hours. How far did you make it in that time? Many of you will be able to intuitively solve this and get the correct answer of 150 miles. But how did you get this answer? To explain where this came from, as well as how to solve many more complex problems, in this video I'm going to be teaching you about definite integrals. Okay, so what is a definite integral? To explain this, I think it's important to understand the parallels between this and what you've already learned with derivatives. If you had a curve like this and were asked to find the derivative, you'd be finding a way to get the slope at any point, like this. If you were asked to find a definite integral, instead of the slope at a point, you'd be finding the area under a curve between two points. So if you wanted to find the area under this curve between points A and B, you would write it like this, which is read as the integral from A to B of f of x dx. If you watched our video on indefinite integrals, you might find this looks pretty familiar. The only difference between indefinite and definite integrals is this A and B here. All these letters represent are the points you want to find the area between where the point on the bottom is known as the lower bound and the point on the top is known as the upper bound. Alright, that's great, but how do we solve this? To do so, we need something called the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, which looks like this. I know the title and the notation may seem a little daunting, but I promise it's not as scary as it looks and sounds. These capital F's just represent the indefinite integral or antiderivative of the function f of x that's within the integral. So all you have to do is take the antiderivative of your function, plug in your upper bound b, and now we'll get this area here. Then you plug in your lower bound a to that same antiderivative to get this area here. Subtracting this area from the first area will leave you with the area that you wanted in the first place. Now if you're not sure how to find antiderivatives or just need a refresher, Quickly go watch our video on that before continuing. Okay, okay, enough of this theoretical junk. Let's see how this works with an example. So let's say you are asked to find the area under a function f of x between x equals 1 and x equals 4, where f of x equals 2x plus 1. So all this is saying is that we have this curve and we want to find this area underneath it. First things first, we need to find the antiderivative of this function, capital F of x. Using the integral power rule we learned before, we find that the antiderivative is 2x squared divided by 2 plus x plus c, which can be simplified to just x squared plus x plus c. And I like to write it in these brackets like this with my upper and lower bounds to remind me that we still need to plug in those values. So first, we need to plug in our upper bound of 4. Plugging that in, we get 4 squared plus 4 plus c, which represents this area here. Then we need to subtract what we get when we plug in our lower bound of 1. Plugging in 1, we get 1 squared plus 1 plus c, which represents this area here. Now all that's left is some arithmetic, but hang on, what do we do with these c values? We don't know what those are. Fortunately, if we were to multiply in this negative sign, we would find that we have a plus c and minus c in our expression, which perfectly cancel each other out. And this is the case for all definite integrals that you do. When you are doing any definite integral with bounds like this, you don't have to worry about that pesky plus c anymore. Okay, going through and solving this expression, we find 16 plus 4 minus 1 minus 1, which is 20 minus 2, which is 18, and our desired area shown here. Now that we covered that problem, let's return to our question from the beginning. Let's say you were driving your car at 50 miles per hour for three hours. How far did you end up driving? In other words, we want to know what your change in position was from the time you started at hour zero to the time you stopped at hour three. Since your speed, 50 miles per hour, is the derivative of position, or rather, your position is the antiderivative of your speed, we can find our answer by taking the integral from hour 0 to hour 3 of 50 miles per hour dx. 
Visually, we have a constant speed of 50 miles per hour and want to find the area under the curve from 0 to 3. So first, let's once again find our antiderivative. Since our function is 50, we find that the antiderivative is 50x. Plugging in our upper and lower bounds, we get 50 times 3 minus 50 times 0, or 150 minus 0, which equals the 150 miles many of you intuitively knew from the beginning. Now I know this video is pretty dense and it may have been confusing, but if you've rewatched it a time or two and practice some more example problems, I promise you'll have it down in no time. And if you did find this video helpful, I implore you to hit those like and subscribe buttons into oblivion to help us help more students like you. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams, don't let a class get in the way.